Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome aboard as this podcast is called Imagine Wealth Without Risk. I'm lucky today because we have one of our coaches on board, and he and I are going to talk a little bit informally about contract to sale for cash for deed and that kind of thing. And fortunately, Billy's an expert. So let me give you a quick uh, introduction to Bill because some of you don't know him, but uh, Bill's kind of a maverick guy. Not He's definitely a maverick, a renegade. The rest of the world goes out and borrows money to do this, but not Bill. He knows how to use credit cards. He did 60 deals using credit cards. Think about that. And he doesn't have to go out begging for money. He just uses credit cards and gets the, the job done. And then on the other side of it, most people go to the bank and they wait months and months to get financing and all that. And Bill doesn't do that. He just uh, creates a contract. They call it, I call it a contract for deed or a contract for sale. And uh, we're going to talk about those two things today. So here's a guy that he doesn't need the rest of the market. He doesn't need brokers. He doesn't need repairmen. He doesn't need, he can do the tax lien and deed business like no one else. And so I wanted to bring him on board and clear up some of this stuff because a guy that's done uh, 40, 50 deals and done them all the same way can give us some real good insight. So, Bill, you're there. Can you hear me okay? I can, Ted. Okay, good. Bill, um, uh, I gave a little brief in introduction, but you can always add stuff as you go along if you want to. But uh, my clients and your clients, they're used to this traditional real estate stuff. And uh, that's all fine for people that are traditional real estate people. And they're the ones that don't make any money. But you're a guy out making money and really doing deals. And uh, I know you use this contract to sale to get things done. So, First of all, tell us what a contract of sale is. Okay, basically it's a contract between the buyer and seller, uh-huh. and it's just a piece of paper. I see. Do, do, do I have to have an attorney to do that, or what, what do I do? There's a couple ways to get a land contract or a contract for sale. What I do mostly is I take and go to a title company who has one on staff. And if they have one on staff, they don't charge you anything else to anything extra to draw up the land contract. Okay. Oh, so you go to t- the title company as an attorney, you mean? Oh, okay, I got it. A lot of them do. There's some that don't. And if they don't, they're going to charge you a whole bunch of money. So find a title company who has one on staff. Okay, attorney on staff. And you want him because? Well, because it's always best to have a, an attorney draw up any legal paperwork Uh and you can Google it and you can also find them. But when you do that, you have to include the state that you are owning the property in so that it's legal in that state because each state has its own separate rules. Oh yeah. Okay, good. We understand that because that's the way the counties are. They're all different in different states. Okay, good. I got that. And so you go to a title company and get this contract. But Correct. you're getting it from them, not because you're asking him for legal advice. You just want a legal contract. Correct. Okay. So now I don't have to pay 500 bucks an hour for that, do I? No. If they're on staff, uh, they'll include that at no extra charge is what I have found. Okay. All right. Good. All right. All right. So it's just a contract between two people, and we can get one at a title company. What has to be in the contract? First of all you need to negotiate out the contract and the terms that you need to be concerned about is number one, the down payment. Okay. How much are they willing to give you up front? Uh Second of all, what can they afford on a monthly payment? Oh, okay. And then the interest rate comes in third. I see. And then the number of years that the contract will last uh-huh. And then last of all is actually the price. And once you get four of those numbers agreed upon, the fifth one works automatically because of the math. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question I should have asked first. And that would be, why on earth are you even using a contract to sale? Why don't you just get a broker and do it that way? The big thing is you can make more money by taking and using a, a land contract or a contract for sale. So how do you make more money? How do you make more money? Because they don't care about the price. They just want a house. And a lot of times you can get five to $10,000 more 
by using this method. Oh, wait a minute. You mean to tell me you can get more money for a property if a person makes payments than if you have a realtor sell it? Correct. Or if you have a cash buyer. Yeah. I, because remember that if you have a loan, yeah. um, the loan company wants to appraise the property and they don't want to give you anything over and above what they think it's worth. Oh, Here, yeah. um, they just want the house and they want an affordable payment. That's the most important thing on a land contract or a contract for sale. When I teach my classes, I'm always saying to people, I say, let's think about this a little bit. If you get the Sunday paper and you try to figure out the price of a new Buick or, or a used car or anything, you can't find the price of the darn thing. They just tell you the payments. So it's the same with houses then. People just worry about the payment. Is that it? Absolutely. They want to make sure that they can make the payment so that they can end up with the property in the long run. And they don't necessarily care how long it's going to take. Okay. All right. So what were those four things? Once again, I didn't write them down, but I will now. Okay. Number one is the down payment. Okay, good. Um, number two is how much their monthly payment needs to be. Okay, good. Three is the interest rate. Good interest rate. Four is the number of years that the okay. contract will run, and then five is the price. So there's actually five different items. Okay, good. And so how do you know the uh, the payment and stuff? Do you have like amortization scale you use in a little booklet or do you go online? How do you know what the payment is gonna be? Whatever they can afford. Whatever they can afford, okay. Right. So, so if they can afford $500 a month, we make the pay payment $500 a month. If they can afford $300 a month, we make it that. Remember that when this contract goes into effect, they still have to pay the insurance. Oh. They have to pay any repairs. Right. And they have to take and pay, uh, pay taxes. Yes. Okay. All so right. So the, th the three things that a renter would not pay. Okay, good. So they're paying the taxes, they take care of their own maintenance, and they have to have insurance. Correct. Okay, good. All right. So now. That's just, that's just like having a mortgage, except you tailor it to the client so you can get the thing sold. So does that speed up the sales process? From the time we start negotiating on this till we close, seek tops. Oh, it takes two weeks to get an appraisal, for God's sake, or, or more. Exactly. And we uh, don't have to do that. Oh, so you just skip right by all that stuff. Yep. Okay. All right. And, what, and you don't have, so you're the banker, you're doing the approval. Exactly. So you don't have to, they don't have to wait uh, umpteen weeks to say, oh, your credit needs to be repaired and all that stuff. You don't give a damn about the credit. You just want to get a payment. Right. So it's not like going to Bank of America or Wells Fargo. They're dealing with the bank of bill. The bank of bill. Okay. Well, I like that. Okay. Well, that's good. And so the advantages to the customer are you get it done quickly. You make the payment the way they want it. Uh, anything else? As long as they're happy with the house, it's just about uh, them being able to move in quicker. Wow, that's a great deal. Okay, good. And do you call it a contract of sale? What do you call that? In Michigan, it's referred to as a land contract. Is, in is that other the same states, thing? In other states, it'll have other names, but almost all of the Midwest calls it a land contract. Okay. All right. So that's nifty. So if I had like a $50,000 house and I want to sell it and the guy's got a couple of grand and I'm willing to take a couple of grand and you pay me 500 a month, I can get it sold. Exactly. That sure makes life a lot easier. Okay, good. All right. All right. So you've done a lot of these deals. It sounds too good to be true. So tell me this, do these people keep paying or do they bail out? Some of both. But I would say that about 90% of the people will continue to pay because, 90%. because they don't really have a lot of other options elsewhere, especially if their credit isn't good. Oh, and so you don't give a damn about their credit. I really don't care. As long as they can it. continue to make payments, we're good. Huh. How long a contract will it be? Because of my age, I like to do 10 years or less. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, right. if it's a younger person, 
could be yeah. 15, it could be 20, 30 years, whatever. So the, there's no law against this, is there? No, it's perfectly legal. Happens all the time. Right? Especially in commercial deals. More commercial deals are sold this way than houses and land are. Yeah. And why do you suppose people don't use it? They just don't know or what? A lot of people don't know a lot about it. And years ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago, it was a lot more popular than it is today. You just have to take and, and educate people. And most people have heard that it exists, but it's just a matter of taking and educating them as to how it works. And once they find out that they're going to qualify for it, they're usually all over the deal. So when you say that, you mean the buyers the all buyer. over? Yes, that's what I'm referring to as the buyers, yes. So when you have someone inquire to you, you just ask them what they can afford. What the two key questions is, how much can you come up with for a down payment and what can you afford monthly? I got it, I got it, okay. Do you have any examples of these things? Sure. Really? I have actually three. 301 Cass Avenue. Oh, yeah. I bought it at the tax sale for $10,000 and I resold it for $30,000. Wow. Yeah. 20,000 bucks? Right. Oh, $20,000 profit. Correct. And uh, who did you sell it to? I actually sold it to a realtor who was going to rent it out. You're kidding. So nope. you sold it to a realtor and, and the realtor signed the contract. Is that right? Absolutely. And you didn't go through all that hoopla of going to a bank and you didn't go to a, nope. a, a big closing and all that business? We actually closed at a title company, but because I think that's the fairest way to do a closing is to do it that way. Uh-huh. Okay. That way the, the buyer and the seller are both satisfied that it's actually an effective way to do business. Okay. So you like to use other people that are professionals. Okay. All right. That's good. All right, so does that realtor pay you on time? Yes. And so how much money would you get monthly on that? Um, I don't have the contract right in front of me, but I think it was around $300 a month. Yeah, did you get a nice down payment or something? Yeah, I think I got 5000 on that one. Wow, so you got half your money back? Yes. So in, in two years, you got all your money back? Pretty much, yes. And how long a contract was it? Um, again, I don't have it right in front of me, but it was probably 10 years. So you get eight probably years or three? 10 year contracts than any other number. Oh, yeah. So that means you get eight years at 300 bucks a month. Right. Wow, on one deal. And you already mm -hmm. got half of your money back. Oh, geez, that's really good. Okay, right. good. All right. So that was called, what did you call that one? That is 301 Cass Avenue. All right, that's good. You got another one? Yep, the second deal was 128 West Clark. West and I bought, Clark. It, bought it at the tax sale for $6,200. 6200 Which was the opening bid. Wow. And I was able to resell that for $30,000. Wow. So I made $23,800 on that one. And did you do a contract to sale or you just sold it? No, I got, did a contract for sale. And how much? So you sold it for 30000 Right. Yeah. And I got, I think I got also got $5,000 down on that one. If you can, it's nice if you can get your winning bid back. Oh, yeah. yeah get all your money back. You get all your money back and then it's just yeah. payments for the difference. Yes. But you got pretty damn close. Yes, very close on that one, yes. Yeah, and do you remember what the payment was? That was very similar also. I think it was either three or $400. Wow, oh my mm -hmm. God, that's great, that's great. So now just between two of them, you got 600 or 650 bucks a month. Uh, terrific, that's great, okay, good. A very small investment, mm -hmm. okay, good. Any more? Yeah, there was a commercial up building I bought at 217 Fifth Street. Yeah. And I bought it at the auction for 14000 Yeah. I didn't do quite as well with this one, but I did sell it for 28000 You doubled your money. Doubled my money. 
But what was interesting on this is we only did a two-year land contract. Two years? Two years, yes. Wow. He was paying me more than $1,000 a month. No way. Yes. Yep. Wow. And so it was to a local car dealer who attends the auctions like I do. And so he seen me buy it. And he seen that I was, you know, going to bid it up if I needed to. And that was also the opening bid, $14,000. Wow. That's terrific. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Good for you. All right. Let's summarize here a little bit. All right. So you're saying to me that, first of all, you're a guy that's, uh, uh, let's call you a maverick, yeah, because you don't, even, you don't even care about borrowing money, but you could borrow money if you wanted to, but you could just use your credit cards because Michigan will let you buy properties with a credit card, right? Correct, yes. Okay, so you use your credit card, and now when you want to sell it, now how do you sell it? Do you put it on Craigslist? Do you, you do Facebook ads, or what do you do? How do you sell them? I like to put a sign on the property, and oh. so I usually describe what it is, whether it's a house or a duplex, and then the important words on there are, are land contract available. Some places in America could call it owner financing. Whatever oh. your local terminology is the terminology you want to use. So does the average guy understand what that means? If they don't fully understand it, they'll call and ask you some questions. Oh. And that's what you want is you want to start a conversation with somebody and tell them your set of rules, which is I don't do more than 10 years anymore. And I'd like X amount of dollars down. If they come close to that, we probably have a deal. And then we just figure out what the monthly payment is. And if they can afford it, we're good to go. Wow. Now, can you get enough people to respond on a sign? I found that in the past, most of the time, I'll get two or three phone calls a week. Okay? Two or three a week. Two or three a week. But one of my students who just did a deal that way, they even got more phone calls. As the market tightens and prices rise, more people are going to be looking for alternatives. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking for this bread and butter market. So when you buy a property, you say, you probably look at the property and say, I could sell that for X, but you actually don't do that. You actually take a broker and he tells you, isn't that right? Didn't you tell me that? Sometimes I go to a broker and I try to get a fair estimate of what the property is worth. Uh -huh. And sometimes I need to cut the price down a little bit so that we can move the property quicker. Uh -huh. So, because I don't want to be taking phone calls for two or three months. Oh, you don't even want to do phone calls to make you 20 grand. I don't mind doing <laughs> phone calls, but I just don't want to take and uh, drag out the process too long. I see. I'd rather right, so take a little less profit and sell the deal quicker. I got it. And mm -hmm. how, how many people do you think have to call you before you make a deal? I think the most I've talked to is about 20. Wow. And then we usually have a deal. Yeah. Now, you don't always do business in the exact same town. You're in different towns, right? And a lot of the properties that I own are two counties over from where I live. So you're saying this will work in any county, at least in Michigan, it'll work in any county. Is that what you're saying? I think it'll work in any county in America, to be honest with you. Oh, I'll be darned. So this isn't some unique thing that only Bill can do. Any, anybody could do this. Anybody can do it. All they have to do is get a, a plain sign and a magic marker and a stake and put it in the ground. And the bigger you can put in the ground, the more that people will see it and that kind of stuff. But some local cities have ordinances about how big those signs can be. So if you, you get a standard 24 by 30 inch sign that you can get in any hardware store, uh, that's always acceptable, I found. Okay. All right, let's go back. Uh, we got another couple of minutes. So um, I'm wondering if we go back to this contract or land contract or contract for deed. I think some people call it cash for deed. They got all kinds of names for these things. Right. And I can get one of those where? You're going to get it from an attorney. 
Yeah. Or you can get it from a title company who has an attorney on staff for free. I like the for free part. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> I do too. Okay. okay. Now the title companies, are they going to give me a bad time if I go in there or do they like me? They like you because they want to do business with you and they're going to make some money off of you. Now, how do they make money? They make money by selling, first of all, by preparing the paperwork okay, oh, yeah. and closing yeah. the deal. All right. And there's four or five different fees that they charge. And if uh -huh. they can do title insurance, they like that because that brings them in a fair amount of money. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So they like you when you come there. It's not like you're an oddball. This is okay for them. They, they, they... And another thing you can do is if you're not using a realtor, uh -huh. you can stop at any title company and say, I'm going to sell this property on my own. Oh. And they will give you a packet of forms so that you can draw up the contracts. Wow. So yeah. they'll actually give you a contract you can use? Yes. And it's free until you close the deal. And, and then, then you got to the, pay their fees. And then would their fee be 500 bucks or 2000 or what would it be? It's going to vary, but I think an average might be around uh, 1200 to $1,500. Oh, okay. So that's a good few hours work for them, but they get pretty profitable work, right? Oh, okay. All right. So everybody is incentivized. The client likes it because they get the payment they want, right? Correct. Okay. And you like it because you can sell it fast. Correct. And the title company likes it because they get to do a certain amount of work. So everybody, so this is a win for everybody, right? Correct. So why isn't it commonplace all over the USA? Right now, most people are pushing their buyers, realtors are pushing their buyers into getting a mortgage. Right. Or if they're a landlord, some of them are paying cash. And so more things, transactions happen those two ways by far than people doing owner financing or land contracts. I think you did a tremendous job here. And uh, for anybody that's listening, Bill's a coach. And uh, if you want to know about land contracts, this is the guy that's uh, doing it. On my mastermind, I have a, a young woman from Wisconsin. And we don't do bit much business in Wisconsin because they, the rules there are such that tax lien and deed buyers can't make a lot of money. But she came to class, learned how to do it. And she said, I'm going to do it in Michigan. I said, well, then you better get Bill as a coach. And then she, she should chose Bill. And on her first deal, which, by the way, she only was in that deal a couple of weeks, right? And getting started. And right. she thought she was going to sell at one price. And the realtor told her, drop the price by 10000 I told her to add 10000 And believe it or not, she added the 10000 And guess what? Uh, she's now on a contract to sale. And I don't know if she'll get it done today's Friday. But she said, I think by Monday, I'll have all the paperwork all done. And she had to go find an attorney to do it. But it would have been better to go to the title company, right? She's going to double her money on that property in 30 days. Doubling your money in 30 days, I don't know anybody would want to do that. So thanks to you, none of that would have happened unless you had been her coach. So that's, that's really good. She was a great student, Ted, and they worked really hard to make this all come together. And yeah. they got it at a great price at the secondary auction. Yeah. And Didn't they have to drive hundreds of miles to come to Michigan to do they, it? Is that what they did? They did. Oh, so they God. probably had to drive five or 600 miles or more. Well, when people want to make a deal, they want to make a deal, don't they, huh? Exactly. So this is Bill Bettos, and uh, he's, uh, he's our expert for contract to sale. I hope you guys learned a lot. Thank you for joining us today. Go to tedthomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episodes to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.